When not blanketed by the warmth of the sun, the azure veil of the sky is lifted to reveal a clear window into the universe. Every shining dot, a star, a planet, or perhaps a far-off galaxy. And dominating the night sky is our only moon. Lonely in its position above the Earth, so far away, yet its gravitational reach is great enough to pull at the oceans, and its light a guiding beacon to a scene of nighttime navigators. While nothing is stagnant in the universe, change on such a large scale as the placement of stars in the night sky moves so slowly that the oldest of trees would never notice a difference. To animal voyagers, navigating by the features of the earth can be unreliable. Dunes shift, soil erodes, lakes dry up, forests burn. Remarkably, it is the most distant objects observable with the naked eye that are the most reliable in guiding a traveler to his next destination. All motion is relative. This means that from the perspective of the ground, the universe rotates around the Earth. This in turn means that the cast of stars has a reliable revolution around the Earth in conjunction with the day and night cycle and the time of year. There are around 9,000 stars in the night sky, but less than 5,000 can typically be seen by most people on a clear night. And in human history, only a few important celestial bodies have ever been used for navigation. For example, Almost exactly on the northern axis sits a star named Polaris that for centuries has been used by sailors to reliably orient themselves without landmarks, but it is only visible in the northern hemisphere. Using a tool called a sextant to find the angle of Polaris in the sky, latitude can be determined. To find south, they followed Orion's belt, which can also be used to find east and west when on the equator based on where it rises and sets. Knowing what hemisphere you're in, what time of year it is, and the time of where you depart, even longitude can be determined, guiding sailors across potentially thousands of miles of ocean. These advanced methods of celestial navigation may be unique to humans, but other simpler methods of navigation have been used by animals for millions of years, guiding them on their journeys across the globe. By far the most notable object in the night sky is the moon with its 29 and a half day cycle determining how much sunlight it will reflect onto the Earth. As a sphere with only one close light source, only half of it is illuminated at all times, and where the moon sits relative to the Earth during its orbit controls how much light is seen by where you stand. But the moon also subjects the Earth to its own gravity. While incredibly far away, the moon's gravity has enough reach that it can pull at both the oceans and at the Earth. Two tidal forces are created by the moon, one on the near side, where the pole is greatest, and one on the far side, where the earth is pulled away from its own water. But a third of all tidal force is also generated by the sun, who has a similar effect on oceans to the moon, but with half the gravitational impact. Twice a month, the moon and sun's tidal forces align in an event called a spring tide that raises waters to their highest points seen as a full moon and a new moon. This entire cycle is key to the reproductive strategy of one of the oldest genera of animal in the world. With the approaching full moon, strange looking visitors gather on the shoreline in their thousands. These are horseshoe crabs, ancient creatures whose origins lie 150 million years before the Jurassic. On a high tide, the females struggle up the beach and each lay as many as 18,000 eggs, which the males compete eagerly to fertilize. It is a reproductive strategy that has served them well since before the dinosaurs appeared and will do so for at least another 150 million years to come. During a full moon, 
horseshoe crabs rise from the depths of the ocean, breaking from their solitary lifestyle to escape en masse to the highest point the shore will allow. In seasonal waters, they start their journey at the onset of warmer currents, breeding from late spring to midsummer. In tropical waters, this is instead triggered by colder temperatures every month breeding year-round. When crawling to the shallow waters, their primitive eyes are guided by the light of the moon at its brightest point during a spring tide. While they can only see light and dark, being drawn to illumination means they are rewarded with brighter and brighter light the closer they get to the surface. But of course, too much light is a deterrent, limiting their primitive spawning events to the night. High tide allows them to hide their eggs in sands far out from the reach of anything in the ocean that might feed on them, but not completely free from predation. By the time the next spring tide brings waters back to the reach of the eggs, they'll be ready to hatch, escaping to the depths of the ocean until they one day make the same journey as their parents. Fossils of horseshoe crab relatives date to over 440 million years ago, with their order Xyphosura likely much older than that. All the while, they have made their march towards reproduction on shores around the globe in some part for every full moon since. Using the moon to navigate is a trend among arthropods, and it is especially useful for flying insects attempting to orient themselves during the night. For insects who are positively phototactic, they use the moon to know what angle they are flying at, which acts as a sense of balance when there isn't enough light to see the world around them. With heavenly bodies, the angle of the light source will stay the same no matter how far the insect travels, since it is so far away. But with artificial light, the angle changes as they fly around it, throwing them for a loop. Going farther than that, certain nocturnal species that migrate cannot use the rising and setting of the sun to read direction, and so this is replaced with where the moon rises and falls respectively to migrate in a straight path. Flying insects first appear in the fossil record during the Devonian, but it is unclear when they gained their lunar directional sense. But if traveling in a straight path for a short distance is necessary, then a round object like the moon may be unreliable, especially with its occasional limited visibility, such as the case with the nocturnal dung beetle, Scarabaeus satyrus. Male dung beetles have a unique mission gathering the feces of large animals and saving it for the eggs of whatever female they manage to mate with, pushing a ball that can be up to 10 times their own weight. But food means competition, and it is important for the beetles to move the dung away from any other insects trying to lay eggs in it, as well as away from any would-be thieves. During the day, it's easy to see where they're going, but at night, the task is more challenging. Scarabaeus satyrus has a large current range throughout most of the African savanna, stretching from western Africa to southern Africa, where alongside hundreds of other beetle species, they clear several tons of feces from dozens of large-bodied animals, keeping the flow of nutrient recycling in their environment. While unable to see individual stars in the sky, these beetles can see the largest cluster of stars. They see the Milky Way, especially in the southern hemisphere where the galaxy is more visible. When the ball of dung is collected, the male will commence to crawl atop and turn around in circles. This dance under the stars gives the beetle a sense of where celestial bodies are before he begins his journey. Being the shape of a fuzzy line in the sky, the beetles can and do use the angle of the galaxy to move their romantic gifts in a straight path safe from those who would steal it, ensuring they don't roll it back to where they started. When discussing animals that migrate, none are as sophisticated in their methods as birds. While birds as a whole vary widely as to how far, if at all, they travel, the methods used by migratory species are the most fine-tuned in the animal kingdom. While their need to migrate is innate, where they voyage to is learned. Their tools in memorizing these routes across the globe include reading wind patterns, topographical landmarks, the Earth's magnetic field, the direction the sun rises and sets at different parts of the year, and of course, the moon and stars. There are advantages to migrating at night, Reduced predator activity makes the trip far safer as well as the cover darkness provides, a crucial advantage for first-time flyers. The cooler, denser air reduces headwinds, making it easier to conserve energy flying long distances. And of course, there is consistency in using heavenly bodies, both in avoiding reliance on the ever-changing landscape below and the timing cues provided by the clockwork movement of the stars and moon unique to each specific region and time of year. And just as the sun does for daytime migrants, 
the moon and star's rotation in the sky can be used to keep track of east and west. In 1970, a paper by Stephen T. Emlin was published describing an experiment he and his researchers at Cornell University performed on young indigo buntings, wherein it was shown that these birds memorized the movement of the stars to orient themselves during migration. In quote, Three groups of indigo buntings were hand-raised in various conditions of visual isolation from celestial cues. When they had been prevented from viewing the night sky prior to the autumn migration season, birds tested under planetarium skies were unable to select the normal migration direction. By contrast, when they had been exposed as juveniles to a normal rotating planetarium sky, individuals displayed typical southerly directional preferences. The third group was exposed to an incorrect planetarium sky in which the stars rotated about a fictitious axis. When tested during the autumn, these birds took up the correct migration direction relative to the new axis of rotation. These results fail to support the hypothesis of a genetic star map. They suggest instead a maturation process in which stellar cues come to be associated with a directional preference system provided by the axis of celestial rotation. The experiment also showed buntings using certain clusters of stars in the same way we use constellations. In particular, the buntings familiarized themselves with the aforementioned Orion, as well as Ursa Major and Cassiopeia. It would appear that among animals that use the stars for directional purposes, none are as aware of their placement in the universe as these birds. In the open ocean, there are no landmarks, no physical markers to differentiate one section of water from another. Being lost at sea is an all too common occurrence in human history for this very reason, and it is in part what led to the development of celestial navigation, the tool that finally connected all civilizations around the globe. But there are other mammals that travel the oceans with the same challenge, especially those who routinely return to shore. In a joint study in 2008, German and Danish researchers performed behavioral experiments on harbor seals, using a floating planetarium to test their ability to memorize specific lodestars, guiding stars that are brighter than the surrounding ones and thus easier to find. The study showed that while seals do not have the acute star compass that at least some nocturnal birds possess, they have an ability to memorize the path certain lodestars travel in their coastal waters. The seal's outstanding directional precision allows them to steer by following lodestars of learned star courses, a celestial orientation mechanism that was used by Polynesian navigators. The two seals in this experiment were taught which stars to look for, but the ease in their ability to learn and use them gave the researchers confidence in their ability to utilize such behaviors in the wild, especially in maintaining the direction of land when out at sea. There are, however, marine mammals who never go to shore, those who travel the longest stretches of ocean to migrate between coasts of entirely separate continents. This defines the order cetaceans, among which the member that travels the greatest distance of any mammal is the humpback whale. These whales cover 5,000 to 8,000 miles during migrations, spending summers in the poles and winters in the tropics. Despite weather, ocean currents, or variations in depth, they maintain almost perfectly straight paths crossing stretches of water with no landmarks, varying by no more than one angular degree, as demonstrated by a study in 2011 on their migratory paths using satellite-monitored radio tags. The term spy hopping is used to describe a behavior whereby many marine animals will position their heads out of the water to survey their surroundings. It has been observed in seals, whales, dolphins, and even some sharks. While it is often observed in hunting activities or searching for land, at least some species like the humpback are believed to do this in tracking the movement of the stars and moon to orient themselves during their long journeys across the globe. The method of celestial navigation is often used in conjunction with other senses, as it is with other animals previously mentioned in this video. But its directional precision is unmatched and is currently the most agreed upon method when attempting to explain the accuracy with which these whales travel. With the abundance of migratory species traveling in the night, and the complications in testing for this behavior, 
It is currently unknown how many species use the stars and moon for navigational purposes. But the star map circling above the Earth has been there since life's origins, waiting for anyone willing to read it. And it only makes sense that it has always played at least a small role in the cycle of life over which it looms. When you look up to the night sky, you are invited to get lost in a vast cosmos of empty darkness, only occasionally interrupted by a new star with its own planets, with their own moons. Beyond them, there is an unknown number of whole galaxies, the space within which can only be filled by the imagination. In the celestial infinity above, you can lose yourself in the heavens, never to return to where you were. Or perhaps, they just might help you find your way home. <laughs>